Hello and welcome to day 82. Today we begin, or I should say we end, chapter 11 of prayer with the method of St. Alphonsus. So before we dive into that, let us begin as we do each day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts and minds so that we may hear your voice and be given the courage to act upon it throughout this day. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the method of St. Alphonsus. For the exercise of mental prayer, it is well to follow some approved method. The method of St. Alphonsus is a very commendable one because it is both simple and practical. He divides the meditation into three parts, the preparation, the consideration, and the conclusion. With regard to the preparation, he says, endeavor to dispose both soul and body for this important exercise. Dismiss all distracting thoughts and say what St. Bernard said on entering a church, remain here, all you earthly and distracting thoughts. I may have leisure for you after meditation. Recite briefly an act of faith in the presence of God, together with profound adoration of his infinite majesty. Humbly ask pardon for your past offenses and beg for light and grace to make your meditation well. Recommend yourself to the Blessed Virgin, St. Joseph, your guardian angel, and your holy patrons. These acts must be very fervent but brief, so as to proceed at once with the consideration. For the meditation proper, it is good to use a book, at least in the beginning, so as to hold the attention on the subject for consideration. <clears throat> Pause from time to time when you are particularly impressed in order that, like the bee, you may extract the honey from the flower, or that, like the dove, you may take a drink and then look up to heaven before taking another. The importance of mental prayer, however, consists not so much in the consideration as in the affections, petitions, and resolutions that must accompany it. The consideration may be likened to a needle, and the affections, petitions, and resolutions are the thread of gold that follows it. The affections will consist of short and fervent acts of humility, confidence, and gratitude. Frequently repeat aspirations of love and contrition, for these are the links of the golden chain that unites the soul to God. One act of perfect love is sufficient to obtain the pardon of all your sins. Charity covereth a multitude of sins, says St. Peter. St. Thomas teaches that every act of love merits a new degree of glory. Perhaps the most important part of the meditation is the petitions that you address to God. The Lord loves to be importuned and therefore never weary asking him for light and grace, for conformity to his holy will, and for perseverance in good. Above all things, beg him earnestly to grant you his holy love. With love, says St. Francis de Sales, we receive all other graces. Before the Venerable Father Segneri studied theology, he contented himself while at meditation with considerations and affections. But finally, says he himself, God opened my eyes, and from that time on, I devoted myself to petitions. And if there is aught of good in me now, I owe it to this beautiful custom. Follow the example of this holy man and ask in the name of Jesus Christ for all the graces you need. For God has promised to hear and answer your prayers. Amen, amen, I say to you. If you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. At the end of meditation proper, it is very useful to make a special resolution to avoid some particular fault or to be more zealous in the practice of a particular virtue. This resolution must be repeated until the desired end is attained. Outside the time of meditation, we must endeavor to profit by the opportunities afforded to carry out our resolutions. The conclusion of the meditation consists in the following acts. First, thank God for the enlightenment you have received. Secondly, 
Express your determination to carry out the resolutions you have made. And thirdly, ask the Heavenly Father for the love of Jesus and Mary to grant you the grace to be faithful to your resolutions. It is a beautiful custom at the end of meditation to recommend to God the souls in purgatory and all poor sinners. Nothing, says St. John Christodom, proves our love for Jesus Christ better than the zeal we have to pray for our brethren. <clears throat> St. Francis de Sales counsels us to gather a little spiritual nosegay from the meditation and to enjoy its perfume through the day. He wishes to say that we should select one or two thoughts that have impressed us in the morning meditation and recall them frequently during the day to reanimate our fervor and to preserve the fruit of the morning meditation. If you are annoyed by distractions during mental prayer, recall to mind the words of St. Francis de Sales. If you are occupied during the whole meditation in fighting distractions and temptations, you'll have made a good meditation. The Lord looks to the good intention we have and the effort we make, and these he rewards. In another place, he says, in prayer, you must not seek the delights of God, but the God of delights. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And thus ends the method of St. Alphonsus as well as chapter 11, prayer. So much here, but it's beautifully summarized for us. And I invite you to meditate upon whatever it was that struck you. Whatever part of the process of St. Alphonsus, you know, either the preparation of how to begin, the consideration, the meditated meditation itself, or the conclusion. What is it that spoke to your heart and you said, oh, I, I need to do that? Um, I would invite you to do that today. I would invite you to either call upon our Lord and to do this beautiful preparation. Um, it's almost like a short examine as you're placing yourself before our Lord. You know, uh, that act of faith, you know, the adoration, you know, asking pardon, and then, of course, recommending yourself to the Blessed Virgin, St. Joseph, your guardian angel, and all of your you know, holy saints, your patrons. Um, and then spending time in meditation. Um, as you do that, remember what St. Francis de Sales says about, med you know, about distractions. If you're fighting distractions and temptations, keep fighting. Because this is what our Lord looks upon. This is what he rewards, is our intention and our effort to seek the God of delights. Not the delights of God, but the God of delights. And I think this is probably the most important thing we need to remember as we go about our prayer, is that our prayer is designed in order to help us be able to come to a deeper love of our Lord. It's not in order to receive those consolations, which are wonderful, and we should rejoice when we receive them because they're, you know, one of those most precious blessings that we have on this earth outside of Eucharist. But the fact is, is that we should be seeking the God of delights, not the delights of God. So as you reflect upon these, you know, this method, of St. Alphonsus and the different things that he would go about, um, I invite you today to resolve to put into practice one of those things that touched your heart as I was sharing it today and implement it, integrate it into your current practice of meditation. Know of my continued prayers for each and every one of you. God bless and see you tomorrow.